Hello and welcome to a new photo editing video. This time I want to show you a new piece of software I've been using for the past two weeks and it drastically increases the quality of my photos. The discovery of this software was a similar revelation as back when I started using Dixio Pura to pre-process my raw photos. Starting to use Dixio Pura was like upgrading my camera and the software I show you today has a similar effect as you can see in this before and after comparison of a photo I took more than 10 years ago in New Zealand. That evening I somehow managed to produce a slightly better image but as you can see I was finally able to rescue the photo which I failed to do a couple of times in the past. Well thanks to AI and the image enhancer by AI RT the photo now shows the perfect amount of detail and sharpness and the best thing I didn't have to do any manual cleanup as there were none of the typical artifacts you get from many AI image enhancers. In this video we'll now do a ton of pixel peeping and also some comparison to other image enhancers so you get a good idea of what this software can do and why I think it it's the perfect tool for print preparation. Okay, so before I show you how the software works, let's have a quick comparison also to Topaz and On One. I was able to use the Topaz Sharpen here in Photoshop. You find it in the newest version under AI Sharpen. And at first I thought, great, now they have this directly in Photoshop. I'll use it all the time, but not so fast. You can just use it a few times a month. And also it's not very transparent when it stops working. So most of the time when I try to use AI Sharpen in Photoshop, I just get an error message that it doesn't work. But yeah, finally, I was able to use it here on this image. So let's just compare it and also for on one I just downloaded the demo version and played around with it trying to get the optimal result. Let's directly go here to 200%. So this is before anything applied to the base. So we have a lot of pixelation here. This is something you should look at very closely. We have some fringing and all in all it looks not very sharp. Now let's see what more detail did. So it cleans the pixelation, makes everything look sharper and more detailed. So look at this grass here before and after. So this looks very nice and also here for the rocks. Beautiful detail. Now let's see what Topaz Sharpen does and compare it some more detail here. This is what AI RT does. This is Topaz Sharpen and Topaz Sharpen also does a lot. So see before and after, but it doesn't remove the pixelation. It looks in parts even worse than before. In other parts looks more detailed, but here AI RT has a much more natural approach, which is in my opinion, a big advantage. It might not be as detailed in some areas as what you get out of Topaz Sharpen, but also it looks much better. So this is Topaz Sharpen at 200%. In my opinion, over-processed. Maybe that's the setting in Photoshop and here AI RT. So with AI RT, my experience so far, I don't have to go through the image at 100% and try to fix artifacts. I usually don't find any, so I can just use it. And here also for on one tech sharp, result is very similar to what I get from Topaz. So I still have, we will need to zoom in here 200%. Let's go back here again. We still have the pixelation here, similar to what we have with Topaz Sharpen. It looks sharper, but on one, same as Topaz, still pixelated and kind of over-processed, although I tried to use the sliders to get an optimal result. But in the end, for me, ARD comes out as the winner here, just because for it's much more natural results, which mean much less work for me. Now, before we look at some more before and after comparisons, let's have a look at the software itself and how it works. So I'll open up ARD. So when it opens up, you'll present it with this view here, and you can just drag and drop images onto this area here, also multiple images images and do some batch processing. Now some important things. First of all, up here, you can just say download all models or they will just be downloaded as you use them. So whatever you do, hardware check, you can do this. But for me, for example, I have an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050. So my laptop here is four years old and it still works very good and also very fast. Now there are some limitations to the software still. As input, you best use TIFF files 8-bit as RGB. So they don't yet support other color profiles and also not 16-bit which is why, in my opinion, this software should be used at the end of your editing workflow. So for example, for me, in the beginning, I use DxO Pura to get the most possible detail out of my raw files. Then I do all my editing and in the end, I decide how I publish my image. So for example, if I publish for web, I don't need to use a software like AIRT because the image is downscaled. But when I want to print, I usually have to do some resizing, some upscaling, and this requires additional sharpening. This is where AIRT shines. So if you already have relatively good images, high quality, which look 
detailed, don't have much noise. You can use it as a one-click solution. It will just improve the image, add more detail and make it ready for print. If you have noise, it will also remove noise and do many other improvements to the image, which we're going to look at. But yeah, let's just pick an image and I'll show you how to use the software. So as you drop a new image here, it will directly start processing it with the settings you have here. I'll just abort it for now. First, want to show you what you can do. Initially, you see a before and after. There's one thing you'll notice though, the before preview is not very detailed. They're currently working on this. That's what they told me. So this will get better. And this here is still grayed out because it's not yet processed. So here on the right side at the top, what you can do, you will first select a model. And I find if you don't want to do any upscaling and if your image doesn't contain too much noise and what you're looking for is added detail for print, the more detailed GAN version three is the best model to use. There are also some others, for example, AIG C Smooth, and you can read up on those, what they're intended to be used for. I find this produces a little less detail, and then you have real photo, which is the most natural looking. I would use real photo if you have to process an image that also contains some noise still. Although more detail will also work on the noise, I find real photo would be the better model to use as an initial step because down here you can do two pass processing. So what you could do, you could first do the real photo and afterward you can select the more detail. So this way you get a combination of the two. And this combination real photo plus more detail I found works very well if you have an image that contains slightly more noise. But for this image, which is already processed and edited, doesn't contain much noise, I just want to use the more detail here. Now what I could do here is upscale it. And this is a great thing about the software. You can really upscale it a lot. So if you use the Topaz tools in Photoshop, your upscaling will be limited. So you can't upscale beyond a total of, I think, 55 or 60 megapixel. At least I wasn't able to do so, which makes the upscale functionality from to pass as it is integrated in Photoshop uninteresting for me. Here I can go four times eight times, which is too much for an image like this, which already has like 50 megapixels. So my typical workflow would be upscale the image, maybe 1.2 times or 1.3 times in Photoshop for the proper print size, and then just use the one X, which will just apply the image improvements, sharpening, deblurring, and everything that this model is great at to the image. So this is what we're going to do now. The rest here, the strength, just leave it at one. And down here, those color enhancements, you don't need to bother with those. This is better done in Photoshop. It's just if you want to do everything here in the software, they also include some temperature settings, exposure and all that stuff. But usually I won't do this. So let's click on start. If you run it the first time, it would download the models and then you have it on your hard drive. Next time it will not have to download it. And now it does the inference. So my machine, it's pretty slow. If I do such a sharpening into a pass in Photoshop, it takes a minute or so, so a lot of time. Here with ART, this is actually pretty fast. So on my machine, usually around 30 seconds, sometimes more, sometimes less. Now, once the processing is done, you directly have a preview here and you can scroll around and you already see how detailed it looks here on the right side. Now, next step is to export it. And also here are some limitations. Currently, they just support JPEG, PNG 8 and 16 bits. So usually I use PNG 16 bits. And if you set the level to zero, this means it will be the highest quality. I already talked to them and they're planning to add TIFF export, which will make it perfect in my workflow. But as I said, you can also load a 16-bit PNG into Photoshop. So you just click on single export and it will export it to a location which you can specify in the settings. Next, let's quickly open the original and the processed file in Photoshop and have another look. Now, one thing you'll notice immediately with nearly all the images that went through ARRT, they are a little bit less contrasty. So usually the shadows are opened up a bit and sometimes also the colors get a little soften, which if you prepare such an image for print is actually what you want to do. When I do print preparation, I usually raise the shadows a bit just to keep the detail. And yeah, this happens here per default when you apply most of the AIRT models. So now let's move into 100% and just have also look at this image. So here the foreground, you get much more detail here, but without any artifacts also here for those rocks before and after. A very pleasing, very natural result. Also here, just look at this rock face before and after. And now let's look here at this rock. The best thing is here, we don't create any fringing with the sharpening. 
So that's something which often happens if you use normal sharpening tools, you get fringes at the high contrast edges. This doesn't happen with ART. What it does, it even removes fringes if they exist in your images. So overall, a very high quality result now. If I wanted to, I could now do a little bit sharpening on top, depending on which size I want to print. But here, this looks perfect out of the box. Now for the next example, I did some upscaling. So here's an image I shot more than 15 years ago on the Canon US 40D with a mediocre lens, I'd say. So it's not very detailed. It looks good at this size, but if we go in at 100% and this is already now what I show you upscaled with the default Adobe Preserve Details in Photoshop. So just twice the size going from 4000 to 8000. It's not very detailed at 100%. So here I have now different things to compare. First, what I did, I used to pass sharpen in Photoshop to put them sharpening on top of what we did with the preserved details. So let's have a look. So it definitely looks more detailed, but you still have a lot of pixelation going on and it's not a very pleasing result. So in most areas, it doesn't look much better to what I could have done with a normal sharpening here, I'd say. Now, next I did the real photo which remember I said is the one that's most natural and also not as detailed as, for example, the more details which we used before. Let's have a look what it does. So again, it softens the contrast a bit, bringing up the shadows. So see the before and after. So definitely we have more details, but without the artifacts we just saw. But it's also, in my opinion, not enough yet. So very natural look. And what I would need to do is add some sharpening on top of it. And also here in those areas, let's just have a look at this one before and after. So it looks better, but I think we can do more. So let's have a look now at the more details, the one we used before when we were working on the other images. So just again, focus on this area. If we use the more details, suddenly there's a lot more details, but also without any artifacts. But here, a word of caution. So if you have images like this one, which in the original have a lot of areas that don't show much detail to start with, then even with ARRT, you have to be a bit careful and look for artifacts because if you don't have anything the AR can work with, it has to make stuff up and this can sometimes go into the wrong direction. You have this a lot with Topaz, in my opinion, with ARRT, not so much, but still you should pay close attention. But here, just look at this area before and after how much more detail we have but here in this area it looks a bit strange so before and after so this would be something where I would maybe go in and reduce the effect a bit let's also look at some areas that are prone to add effects so if you have such high contrast areas here so before and after so it's dealing with it very nicely. And yeah, what I did, so if this is not yet enough, because it still looks very natural, you could just add some normal sharpening on top of it. So just a touch, giving the image more detail. So no AR sharpen, just normal sharpening. And I think this is a very good result. Also look at this area where we started and now with the more details and a bit of sharpening on top. Now we can also, as I showed you, a two pass in ARRT. What I did here, I applied twice more details, but in my opinion, this didn't work so well for this image because yeah, it messed up the colors a bit. So they look a lot more reddish. So before and after, I think here the sweet spot is just using more details, single pass, and then just adding a little bit of sharpening on top and you get a very good detail throughout the image compared with where we started at. Now, also want to show you what we can do with to pass gigapixel in Photoshop. So be prepared. Definitely looks sharper, but also a lot over processed. And we also have a lot of noise and just look at this area here where we have some strange artifacts. So this is what we get with more details from ARRT and this with the Photoshop integration of Gigapixel. And this is where we started. So that's what I said. There is not too much detail to begin with. And that's often where those AI tools go a little bit overboard and it's not very pleasing. So here I would have to go in and do a lot of cleanup work versus here with ARRT. Yeah, I can nearly use it out of the box. So for me, for this image, it's again, ARRT is the winner. Also, I would have loved to compare the latest versions of Gigapixel AI, so the full version, but I had a look at the homepage. I didn't find any trial version. And also they moved to some ridiculous pricing now where you pay more for the monthly subscription than you pay for Photoshop and Lightroom. So this is really out of question for me. So they disqualified themselves right there with the pricing for such a test here. So talking about pricing, let's also check check what AIRT charges. So first of all, here you can also do a free trial, but if we go to buy now for the image enhancer, 
which is what I've currently tested. You see, they also have a standard license, a yearly license, which is much more reasonable to what we saw with Topaz. But currently what they still have, they have this lifetime license. This is currently even discounted and that's what I got. And in my opinion, this is something to get now because I'm sure in the future, as everybody is moving away from such lifetime licenses, they might also go to something where you can't get the software with all the updates with just a single purchase, which is what you can currently get. I think it's pretty reasonable now. But now let's have a look at some other images so you can see some more examples how ART works, for example, on woodland images or also on cityscape images, because there are also some very nice improvements which I want to show you. So you might remember this image from my last video. It went through my complete woodland photo workflow. I have a tutorial on that on my homepage if you're interested, just 15 euros. Well, this image started with the Exopura, so I already got nice detail. So let's just look here, this area 100%, but this is not yet prepared for print. So for print, you usually have to add more detail. And now let's have a look what more detail does. So again, you see, just look at those leaves here, this area especially, we get nice detail throughout. So it just looks much more crisp here before and after. And again, since this is already a detailed image to start with, I don't have to worry about artifacts in those areas because it will just improve the detail. Also just look at this area here where we have those branches against the bright backdrop for and after. So you see that in those areas it doesn't do too much because those areas are already very sharp and it recognizes that which is very nice. But also if we go up here, so those areas on the other hand, so before and after, so they get more detail, but it's not overboard. So it just looks better. Let's see some difficult areas here before and after. So you see here becomes more detailed. All in all, a very nice result. And also let's look here at the branches and the trunk before and after. So an image that was already high quality to start with was improved to a point where I can just use this file now for printing. And for the final example, I have a cityscape here from Chicago. For this image, I did a custom upscaling in ART. So I went from 8,500 pixel width to 14,100 something because I want to print this at 120 centimeters at 300 dpi. So here I used the custom upsizing. You not only have the option to 2x, 4x or 8x the image, you can also use a custom resolution, which is pretty nice for such specific upsizings. And let's just zoom in and have a look. Here also the original image was already processed and very detailed. But here, for example, for this area, you see the before, just the Photoshop upscaling and then how much clarity we get here. Also here, this area, just have a look before. This was already very detailed. So here we don't get any additional sharpening because it's not required. So the AI decided this is good enough. Down here, get better detail. And then also here, this is where a train went past. So those lights, they now look much more detailed. Also, let's look at some of the brickwork here. So go in at 100%. So the before and now the after. So you get much more detail and it looks very nice here. Other than that, just look here at those lights. Let's go in 200% and also here this little text. So before and after a remarkable improvement. And yeah, this image before and after is now perfect for printing at a large size. And with that, we're at the end of the video. I gave you a complete walkthrough of the software, showed you many examples, but ultimately you really need to test it yourself. So if you're interested, just get the trial version and play around with it on some of your images, because that's always the most important thing. Don't just trust what you see on those videos, especially because the resolution in YouTube videos is always a bit limited. So you don't really see the differences. Sometimes it's better to do a test on your own machine with your own images and see how the software fits your workflow. I'm convinced. So I'll now use it. And I'm also very interested to see what comes next. So those are version three models are used now. And as I understand from their homepage, they weren't necessarily trained on cityscape and landscape images, so on the images for which I now used it. So if in the future they extend their training data to include more of those images, I think we're going to see even better results. But yeah, as I said, just test it yourself. And now see you in the next video. Bye.